Hello everyone. So we'll go, uh, we are going to continue our discussion uh, in the same vein that we had been doing in the previous part of the lecture where we said that we are going to orient our coordinate axis along the principal directions. So, uh, so continuing along that same vein, what, uh, what we are going to do here is that uh, we are going to consider a situation where we have already oriented our uh, our coordinate axis along the principal directions so uh, uh, but now we want to consider a special type of plane okay this plane mind you is not going to be uh, any one of the three principal planes rather it is going to be a special kind of plane uh, which has uh, uh, the property the special property that it is equally uh, inclined to all the three coordinate axes and please note that now the coordinate axes are along the principal directions so this plane that we are considering the special new plane that we are considering that is going to be equally and inclined to the principal directions also okay so now you uh, uh, you think what should be the unit outward normal to that plane to this special plane okay so first of all what we are going to say is that uh, so the name of the topic is of course octahedral stress but uh, we'll, we'll see in a moment what what is the what is the purpose of this word octahedral uh, so consider uh, let's write this in white so consider a plane uh, so uh, I think it's better to first write down that uh, where the coordinate axes are oriented along the principal direction. So we, so we have that out of our way. Uh, now under this situation where the coordinate axes are oriented along the principal directions, we consider a plane uh, which is equally inclined uh, to the coordinate axis or equivalently we can say to the principal directions. All right. Now, what should be? Uh, this is what I was what I was getting at. Uh, what should be the the unit outward normal components be? So, if you consider the n hat, the unit outward normal of this plane, okay, of this plane, uh, then we understand that this should be like this we have written this earlier in the context of uh, deriving our framework for the principal stresses so we understand this but please note now that since we have already chosen a situation where the coordinate axes are themselves oriented along the principal directions therefore this e1 e2 and e3 they are oriented along the principal directions this you must remember now what we are additionally saying is that we are considering such a plane on which the unit outward normal is the, the n hat that is what we are talking about now this uh, this unit outward normal because the plane itself is oriented or equally inclined to the axis the unit outward normal is also going to have equal angles with the uh, uh, with the three uh, axis with the three coordinate axis which means that if you are speaking magnitude wise then we must have that n1 magnitude is equal to n2 magnitude is equal to n3 magnitude but we also know uh, but we also know that n1 square plus n2 square plus n3 square must be equal to what it must be equal to 1 why because we know that the, this is the unit outward normal 
so this is actually so this represents the square of the magnitude of that unit outward normal so this is equal to 1 square is equal to 1 okay now this this thing n1 magnitude is equal to n2 magnitude is equal to n3 magnitude coupled with the fact that this is true leads us to the conclusion that n1 magnitude should be equal to n2 magnitude should be equal to n3 magnitude should be equal to what should be equal to 1 by square root of 3 please do not put a plus or minus sign here okay this is not plus minus this is only plus 1 by square root of 3 okay now uh, because we have such a situation you tell me how many such uh, special planes that are equally inclined to the coordinate axis are possible you see we have two combinations here coupled with two combinations here coupled with two combinations here so how many how many total combinations do we have so we must have eight total combinations okay so interchanging between the plus 1 by root 3 and the minus 1 by root 3 if we take different combinations will end up with eight different sets of this n1 n2 and n3 and each one of each one of those eight sets is going to represent a certain plane okay so the uh, a particular combination of this n1 n2 n3 so suppose you have n1 equal to 1 by root 3 n2 equal to 1 by root 3 and n3 equal to minus 1 by root 3 that will give rise to a certain plane if you take n1 equal to minus 1 by root 3 n2 equal to 1 by root 3 and n3 equal to 1 by root 3 that will give rise to a dist another separate plane so all in all if you take the different combinations you will end up with eight different planes that are equally inclined to the three coordinate axis and if you consider all of them together okay the the geometrical figure that we'll end up with is going to look like an octahedron okay so that is what is the the reason behind this um, behind this name that we are calling this as octahedral stresses so as this as the name of the topic suggests that when we consider the stresses on these eight different octahedral planes the the various stresses that are uh, that are there they are referred to as the octahedral stresses of course now it is interesting to uh, take a look quickly at what would be the uh, what would be the expressions for the octahedral normal stress and the octahedral shear stress so what we are saying is that suppose you consider such a plane and you consider a generic traction vector on it and you consider the tn out of it okay please note that this tn has nothing to do with the principal stress itself okay that principal direction has to do with the coordinate axis this time the the plane itself is is absolutely different from those principal planes this is the octahedral plane we are talking about okay so uh, so this plane uh, so this plane that we are talking about that is the octahedral plane okay this is quite this is absolutely different from the principal plane now if we are on that plane and we are considering the normal component of the traction vector then that will be referred to as the octahedral normal stress and the shear component the corresponding shear component of the traction vector that will be referred to as the octahedral shear stress so let us quickly take a look at what the expressions shape up to be so earlier we had uh, we had said that the so first of all the octahedral normal stress So that is Tn and that we have already seen uh, the expression for that is uh, in terms of the matrix representation it is n hat matrix transpose multiplied with the stress matrix multiplied with the uh, with the column matrix uh, of the n hat now uh, 
what is this stress matrix it is the uh, it is the state of stress which is representing the 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 stress state referred to the coordinate axis that we have chosen and what is the nature of that coordinate axis it is specially oriented along the three principal directions now if we take a quick look at what we had learned in our earlier class you see that the state of stress it shapes up in this fashion okay it shapes up in this fashion so all the only the diagonal elements are non zero uh, here and all the off diagonal elements are zero so what we are going to have here is this n1 n2 n3 this is a row matrix because of this transpose here and the stress uh, stress matrix it is sigma 1 here sigma 2 here and sigma 3 here everything else is zero and finally for the column matrix of the n hat we have n1 n2 and n3 like this now if we if we if we carry out the calculation what we'll find is this is sigma 1 times n1 square plus sigma 2 n2 square plus sigma 3 and 3 square but in the previous slide we have already seen that the uh, that each one of these magnitudes of n1 n2 and n3 is 1 by square root of 3 which means that this one this n1 square is nothing but 1 by 3 n2 square is 1 by 3 and n3 square is 1 by 3 so overall what we have is this thing So we can write here that since n1 magnitude is equal to n2 magnitude is equal to n3 magnitude is equal to 1 by square root of 3. Now uh, you must realize a very important fact here. This combination sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 it is basically coming. So these are the diagonal elements of this stress state. So, because we have uh, we have uh, referred our our uh, our coordinate axis, or we are referring to a coordinate axis to a set of coordinate axes which are oriented along the principal directions. That is why the state of stress has shaped up like this. But suppose suppose we had we had chosen a different stress state, then surely the off diagonal elements would have been non-zero in general. But even then whatever the value of the diagonal elements individually might be what is the if you uh, if you remember what would be the combination of sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 so i want you to remember what we had discussed a couple of classes earlier so you see here the i1 was one of the stress invariants and here we had seen that it was sigma 1 1 plus sigma 2 2 plus sigma 3 3 in general and what we had said was that each of these values may vary separately as we keep on changing our choice of the coordinate axis but the entire combination in which it appears in this i1 that value does not change for a given state of stress for a given physical state of stress so if we come back to this slide that we are talking about now here also you have seen that we have only made a choice of our coordinate axis to be referred to the principal directions but and 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 these values may come up to be whatever they need to be but overall this particular combination is nothing but the first stress invariant only so we must be uh, able to write in the next step as 1 by 3 i1 so you note that the octahedral normal stress that is the tn component referred specially to a plane which is inclined equally to the three coordinate axis 
which in turn are referred to the uh, which are oriented along the principal directions is such that it, this is nothing but one of the stress invariants this is an extremely extremely important fact okay so so please note it down next what about the octahedral shear stress so well the octahedral shear stress uh, we can think of it like this we have already seen the expression of it in terms of the traction vector itself so the magnitude of that square minus the tn square all right so uh, you note that in this particular case our t vector is sigma if we write the cauchy's formula it is sigma dot n hat uh, and this one will be in matrix representation what uh, we can use the symmetricity of the stress tensor and this will be simply sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 here rest of it is zero n1 n2 n3 so this is going to be what sigma 1 n1 sigma 2 n2 sigma 3 n3 and shaped up like a column matrix and this makes sense that it should be a column matrix because you see that this here is a traction vector so the equivalent matrix representation i can write it like this it makes more sense to write everything in terms of the equivalent matrix representation so uh so the traction vector must have three components and because it is a column matrix we choose to write and because it is a vector we choose to write it like a column matrix so it must have three components and these are the three components so what we are going to say here is that uh the t1 is equal to sigma 1 n1 the t2 is equal to sigma 2 n2 and the t3 is equal to sigma 3 n3 all right so if we if we substitute the these things here back here we can actually proceed with finding the expression for the ts so going to the next slide we write this formula again the ts square is equal to uh e vector magnitude square minus t n square now you note that this is nothing but t1 square plus t2 square plus t3 square let me clean that up a little bit okay so this is t1 square plus t2 square plus t3 square is a t vector magnitude square and the tn is nothing but we have already seen that to be 1 by 3 sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 so this whole thing square and the t1 from the previous slide if we just glance quickly the t1 the t2 and t3 are given by these expressions so coming back here these are sigma 1 n1 sigma 1 n1 sigma 2 n2 sigma 3 n3 so square of that plus sigma 2 
into square plus sigma 3 and 3 square minus this 1 by 9 if I keep all these things inside it becomes like that now you also note that this uh, n1 square is, is also the we have this thing to be true that n1 square is uh, so n1 squared is actually 1 by 3 so I need to make a correction here so this is 1 by 3 and uh, this is sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma 3 square all right minus 1 by 9 sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 square so if we continue doing the algebra uh, so what we'll obtain is 1 by 9 here and you get a 3 here so that is 3 uh, sigma 1 uh, whole square plus 3 sigma 2 whole square plus 3 sigma 3 whole square minus uh, sigma 1 whole square minus sigma 2 whole square minus sigma 3 whole square and then uh, the, the, the combinations minus 2 sigma this subscript should not be here the sigma 1 sigma 2 combination the sigma 2 sigma sigma 3 combination and the sigma 3 sigma 1 combination so this thing is going to be so you understand that this is 3 sigma 1 square minus a 1 sigma 1 square so that is uh, twice sigma 1 square so, so what I would like to do is I would, I would like to make this these things so after I've made the the, the subtraction after, after, after I've done the subtraction I would make I'd like to uh, take the perfect square of that I'd like to write this as so I'm skipping a step here I hope you don't mind uh, this thing and uh, of course that that entire thing would come with a with a 2 in front so maybe I should rewrite this Two sigma one plus sigma two plus sigma three whole square. So now we have some extra sigma one sigma two combinations. So that have to be subtracted, and because there's a two in front, so what you need to do is you need to take a minus four sigma one sigma two minus four sigma two sigma three and minus four sigma three sigma one. But these twos are already present. So what we need to, uh, to write this overall so I'm basically skipping two steps here is 6 uh, sigma 1 sigma 2 minus 6 uh, sigma 2 sigma 3 minus 6 sigma 3 sigma 1 now uh, if I continue in the in the next slide uh, what I would like to get at is that you see this combination is our familiar first stress invariant 
And what about this sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 2, sigma 3 and the sigma 3, sigma 1. So if you quickly look back at the slide containing the, the stress invariance, we'll recognize a familiar form. So you see here the second stress invariant I2 here from an earlier slide. This is basically sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2 minus sigma 1, 2 square. But in the, in the, in the case that we are currently doing, the sigma 1 to square is not there because the off diagonal terms are 0. So it is basically sigma 1 1 sigma 2 2 sigma 2 2 sigma 3 3 and sigma 3 3 sigma 1 1. So if you come back, if you come back to this thing, you will see that this sigma 1 1 sigma 2 2 sig sorry sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 2 sigma 3 and sigma 3 sigma 1. That particular combination is nothing but the uh, but the uh, but the I2 itself. So going to the next slide, what we'll have is the S square is equal to the glance, glance back here. So 1 by 9 is present in front. So this is 2 into I1 square minus this is 6 into I2. So the magnitude of Ts that will be what? Uh, so I would like to take this 2 also outside. So what I will do is I can write this in one step as square root of 2 by 3 and within bracket I will have I1 square minus I2 the square root of that okay please note that here I am writing this as the magnitude the TS uh, magnitude in fact you can put this as a magnitude also all right so this is this expression is the octahedral normal shear uh, octahedral shear stress component and earlier what we had found out the we had, the, we had found out the octahedral normal stress. So that was 1 by 3 I1 and the octahedral shear stress that comes out as square root of 2 by 3 I1 squared minus 3 I2. But you note that the special thing going on here is that both the Tn as well as the Ts they come out in terms of the stress invariance. Okay. So both octahedral normal and shear stresses are expressed in terms of stress invariance. All right. So, um, uh, with this, uh, we are going to end this part of the lecture and, uh, and in the next part of the lecture, we are again going to talk about certain other types of uh, parts of the stress tensor and that's going to be very, very interesting and useful. Alright, thank you very much.